So for some 10 years, I've been doing my eyeshadow primarily the same way. I would do my windscreen wiper through the socket and darken the outer V and absolutely no shade to those very classic makeup techniques. They are the foundations. But recently I've been feeling like my eyeshadow placement wasn't doing the lifting that I wanted with my eyes, wasn't doing the contouring and the sculpting. And so I've been experimenting and exploring and I think I've discovered a really cool placement that lifts and sculpts the eye and it's totally daytime friendly. There's no like cut creases or fiddly stuff going on here. And I'm gonna show you how. On this side here, we're going to create this new lifted contoured eye shape. And on this side here, I'm going to do my eyeshadow as I have been doing for many years. And hopefully we can see a little bit of a, a little bit of a difference there. Step one is prime the eyes. However you like to do this, with a concealer, with a powder, with an eye primer, it really depends on what kind of textures you like working with and also your skin type, right? If you're really oily, then I think a dedicated eyeshadow primer is worthwhile. I'm gonna use the NARS Pro Prime Tinted Eyeshadow Base on both eyes, just to get a really clean canvas for our eyeshadow. I find with these eyeshadow bases, you don't need to apply very liberally just a little amount, as little as you can get away with because otherwise eyeshadow primer can get a little bit know, kind of crusty and gunky. So I'm just going to apply this very lightly over the entire eye area and a little on the, the lower lash line too. So when I say old side, we're talking about my old techniques. And when I say new side, we're talking about my new and improved techniques. So on my new side, I also like to do a little bit of priming with a cream eyeshadow of sorts, just to give the eye a, a bit of a, a luminous, glossy appearance to begin with. And I like to use something like a Tom Ford Cream Color for Eyes or the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize, something nice and sheer and luminous. So I'm going to take that cream eyeshadow all over the mobile lid and buffing a little higher. Again, this is not meant to impart too much colour or texture. It just gives an all over luminosity to the eye, which I think is very, feels very current and contemporary. We moved away from this very matte sculpted eye look. It's always this kind of glistening, you know, donut glaze kind of skin and eyes. And starting with a bit of a, a light wash of a luminous cream eyeshadow will give you that really luminous eye look. Onto my old side. So I would often start my eyeshadow looks with a generous dose of socket contouring. So taking a medium shade through the socket. Really big windscreen wiper motions. I would take this quite close to the brow because I have quite a bit of space. Big blown out crease shading. Absolutely nothing wrong with this placement. I still like it. Next on my old side, I would take a little bit of a deeper brown and really focus on contouring that outer V. This is the good old deepen the outer V placement. And I would sweep this out quite far towards the temple. On the new side, I'm going to use the same eyeshadow but instead of really uh, shading and carving the socket, I'm actually going to create a new eyeshadow placement. This is sort of like a diagonal wedge. So we're focusing on the outer half of the mobile lid and extending a little bit into the crease. Sort of like a stripe that extends where this brush is going. So I'm not focusing on getting too deep on the outer corner of the eye here, we're mainly focusing on this area here, bringing that up into the socket a little and shading. The idea here is I'm really trying to avoid bringing eyeshadow shading really far out towards the outer corners of the eye here. Everything ought to stop inside this brush line. And what this does is it creates a bit of an optical illusion of a lifted eye, whereas some of this outside shading here has the tendency to bring the outer eye down, whereas this is a little bit more of a lifted placement. And again, I'm trying not to go too high um, nowadays. I used to bring my eyeshadow really close up here. It starts to feel like a lot of makeup. If ever it gets a little bit too high, I will just come with my powder brush and buff away. Let's go back and do a little bit more of this stripe shading. What should I call this? It's like a diagonal wedge. 
I kind of think of it as like a stripe that just kind of extends down here and buffers at the crease. So if I look straight ahead now, I think you can already see the difference that this kind of shading makes to the eye. That's not to say that every eye shape is going to benefit from this transition, but it's something nice, I think, to experiment with. Another area that you can shade to make the eyes look bigger is this area just beside the nose. A little bit of shading there can extend the eye area. Let's build a little bit more depth on this new side. I'm gonna take again a deeper brown eyeshadow and this time, instead of really focusing on the outer V as we did on this side, I'm just gonna pat on the outer half of the mobile lid, really making sure that I do not extend any of the shading beyond this line. You can do a little bit of stamping in the corner, but I'm aiming to keep the eyeshadow quite light in that area. Really press that dark eyeshadow into the lash line here. Step three is the highlight. So on my old side, I'm going to take a beautiful foily. Oh my God, it just went everywhere. Oh my God. Oh, white dress. Oh. <laughs> So on my old side, we're going to take this beautiful foily eyeshadow. This is A Little Quirky by Colourpop, one of my favourite shades. And I'm going to apply this all over that mobile lid. Beautiful, sparkly shade, very classic eyeshadow placement. On the new side, I'm going to use the same eyeshadow, but this time I'm really going to focus it just on the very ball of the eyelid. This is like a vertical stripe. So starting above the iris and creating a bit of a vertical stripe upwards. I actually like to take this a little bit above the crease because that way it sparkles even when my eyes are open. And I think it also helps to disguise a little bit of a hooded lid. But on the new side, this sparkly eyeshadow is really designed just to bring the ball of the eye forward to give it that beautiful um, curve and shape but I'm not using it all over the eye liberally as I would before, just as a little highlight. Step four is eyeliner. So on my old side, I used to create a wedge on the outer half of the eye using a black liner, bringing that all the way in, right across the lash line here, but thickest at the outer corner. So you can see I've created a bit of a wedge shape here. This is still a classic flattering eyeliner shape, but I'm going to show you a way to make it a little bit more of a lifting eye shape. On the new side, I'm also going to use an eyeliner, but I'm going to start with brown eyeliner. And in this case, again, I'm very cognizant that I don't want to bring my shading beyond this point. So let us create a little bit of a wedge shape on this side too, but it's almost like we've just shifted this wedge a few mil this way so that we're not taking that eyeliner right to the end of the lash line. We're stopping a little short. Gonna take this until I meet the center, the pupil, and then taper it down. Hopefully you can see on this side, I brought the eyeliner right to the outer edge. Whereas on this side, I've stopped it just short a few mil of the edge of the eye. And what this does is it helps to create the illusion of a little bit more lift at that outer eye. I like to buff that brown liner out so that it appears to be more as part of the eyeshadow look as opposed to a, a stark crisp liner. And sometimes I do actually like to add a little bit of black, but I would just add this at the very base of the lash line for a little extra intensity. But the brown liner does most of the work. For the lower lash line on the old side, I would take a brown eyeliner over the outer half and I would really connect that upper and lower eyeliner at the outer corner. I would blend out this lash line down here for the lower lash line on this new side, I'm going to take that cream eyeshadow over the lower lash line again. I don't love a really heavy lower lash line day to day. Uh, recently, I like a little bit more of a luminous, fresh under eye look. I find that my concealer looks better if I don't have a heap of eyeliner and eyeshadow under my eyes as well. 
For the lower lash line on the new side, I'm going to take that sparkly foil eyeshadow and just stamp in the center of the lower lash line. And this mirrors what is going on up top here, but also it gives the eye a beautiful sparkle when looking straight ahead. Step six is lashes. When I used to curl my lashes, I would just pump at the base of the lash. And this does a great job of getting your lace lashes to face the ceiling, but it's definitely a very crimped look. Whereas nowadays when I curl my lashes, I do a light pump at the base of the lash, move up a mil, move up a mil, and that way we get a little bit more of a natural C curve to the lash. I repurchased another Byredo Space Black Mascara. This is so expensive, it makes me a little bit nauseated, but this stuff honestly trumps false lashes for me. It makes the lashes look gorgeous. Defined, separated, black, long wearing, curling formula. Like what more could you ask for? Beautiful form. Mascara for the old side, I used to rush. I was always rushing. So moving my wand really quickly through the lashes, she's in a rush. For the old side, I would coat every single lash, including all of the lower lashes. I would coat every single lash, including these lashes on the outer corner of the eye, which for me are like three centimeters long. They start looking really long and gangly, but I would apply to all. On the new side, I really focus on slowing down when I go to do my mascara. So really wiggling at the base of the lashes and slowly dragging up the lash. I know it might seem a little laborious, but slowing down gets the job done better. Much more lifted, much less clumpy if I slow down. Really wiggling at the base of the lash, wiggle. Now again, I'm trying not to get too much mascara on these outer lashes because I want most of the depth and the blackness to be mirroring the, mirroring the eyeshadow placement just on the outer half of this lower lash line, stopping just short of the edge. Really darken your lashes there. And you can see you've got a little bit more of a, a lifted mascara placement. Yeah, leaving the last few lashes on the outer corner bare. This actually serves a few other purposes. It means that when your eyes water throughout the day, you don't get panda eyes at the outer corner of the eye. It helps to create this lifted shape and it creates a little bit more of a natural makeup look when a few of your lashes on the outer corner and the inner corner are not completely overloaded with mascara. It just feels a little bit more chic and understated. For the lower lash line, I'm going to really focus my mascara on the center of the lash line. And this makes the eyes look a little larger. But again, also we get less smudging on the inner corner and on the outer corner as the day progresses. So it's also a very practical eyeshadow and mascara placement. Lucky last step on my new side, I've taken to using a blurring face powder, preferably something with a little bit of a, a little bit of coverage. This is the uh, Huda Beauty Luminous Press Powder in Fair. And I've been using this to brighten up that outer corner here. So we're creating a little diagonal line here using our pressed powder. And by brightening this area here, again, we are further exemplifying that lifted shape. I also like to add just a little bit under the brow to get a soft highlight. And these blurring powders are really beautiful around the eyes because they smooth texture as well. So multi-purpose there. And our illusion is complete. The final comparison, the way that I used to do my eyeshadow and the way that I'm currently doing it now. I think this new updated version feels a little bit lighter. It doesn't feel like quite so much shading, but it still has that amazing lifting effect. I also want to reiterate, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the way that I did my eyeshadow on this side. These are foundational techniques. I still use them all the time, but it's, I think fun to experiment how different shapes and different shading can, can alter the shape of the eye. 
I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know, do you have any cool, fun techniques that you use when shading your eyes to help lift the eyes? I wanna hear about it. Let's chat in the comments and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.